Praise God. And in this Sunday, this Sunday, uh, this first Sunday, I'll be discussing this enlarging yourself. And we say enlarging yourself, I mean maximizing your potential. Hallelujah. Sabihin natin sa ating katabi, meron kang potential. Hallelujah. Praise God. And in order for us to, to elaborate this idea of enlarging yourself or maximizing your potential, uh, pumili po ako ng isang pasis sa Bible na siguro one of my favorites din. Ito po ay galing sa Genesis 39. And in the, in the time that I have for you this morning, uh, before communion, yan po ang pag-uusapan natin. Amen. Are you excited again? Praise God. Let's bow our heads and we will go to God in prayer. Let's commit our time together. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we are so excited sa inyong gagawin sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa amin. Indeed, it is your will for us to grow. It is your will that you that everything that within us that you have given, Lord, ay patuloy pong ma-maximize in such a way that people will be blessed, your name will be exalted, and soul will just come before you and accept you, Father, and make us a blessing. Hallelujah. Marami pong salamat and ev- our desire that every time that we meditate upon your word, that all of us will be ushered into the feet of Jesus Christ and give him the glory. Marami pong salamat, Panginoon. This is our prayer with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, hallelujah. Palakpan po natin ang ating Panginoon. Praise the name of Jesus, hallelujah. When we talk about this topic, siguro ang unang pwedeng pumasok sa atin is yung idea ng, I, I don't know kung familiar kayo sa litang mediocre. Um, uh, we're familiar, pag, pag pinag-usapan yung business world or anything when it comes to uh, sabihin nating average, yan po yung laging naiisip natin. Pag sinabing ni Joker, it, it deals with moderate. It deals with low quality and also low value or ability or per- per- performance. Meron po kaming um, kasabihan po sa Bible school na minsan, Pag sobrang nagra-rush po yung mga students when it comes to fulfilling their requirements and giving their papers, lalo na pag midterm exam, ang mga papers po na naipapasa ay yung basta makapasa lang. You're familiar? Yung marang, I mean, that's why ang laging comment is you could have been better, you could have been do better, or pwede mong gawin yan in such a way na pwede merong excellence. You put excellence in everything you do. But because you rush things out, Ang nagiging labas is, I mean, just at least nakapasa. Hindi bumagsak, pumasa pa rin at the end of um, the grade. And we're, we're talking about yung kung baga bibigyan natin ng mas, mala, mas mababaw or sabihin natin term natin, layman term. Ang ibig sabihin ng mediocre is ordinary. It's just ordinary. And when we, uh, I mean, differentiate that mediocre sa God's will, Ang ibig sabihin niyan ay negative because mediocrity is the enemy of excellence. Mediocrity is the enemy of excellence. Why I say this? Because, um, hindi po galing sa akin yan. But anyway, why I use this? Because nowadays, when it comes to our spirituality, Christian life is not just coming to church every Sunday in a two-hour service. It's not just offering your tithes and an offering. It's not just worshiping the Lord Marami pong pwedeng dapat gawin. And when we talk about maximizing your potential, when we talk about enlarging yourselves, we are talking about doing yung requirements ng Panginoon when it comes to service to Him. Is spirituality, excellence. Yun po yung desire ng ating Panginoon sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa atin. So that's why when we talk about excellence, ang ibig sabihin nito is pursuing Pursuing or doing the best we can, we can with the gifts and abilities God gives us. I mean, binigay sa inyo yung gift ng Panginoon. And remember, yung month po ng April and May, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. And according to our pastor, meron pong mga areas na pwede po nating i-focus. At marami pa tayong i-highlight doon kasi madami po yung pag-usapan. And that desire is for us not just to stay put and know those, those gifts, but for us to exercise those gifts and use those gifts to equip the church. And in using those gifts, ang desire natin is to put excellence, maglagay tayo ng mark, not just to be part of it, but also to, to be the best person that God desires sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa atin. Merong pong excellence. Merong excellence. And our topic, actually, nung, nung 
nung dinabasa ko po yung buong details ng purpose of this message, I was so encouraged actually at first because uh, it, it is not just it, it it does not deal with um, my own personality as well, but all of us. I mean, lahat po ng aspeto ng ating buhay sakop nito at yun po yung desire po ng buhay ng bawat isa sa atin. So, wow! When we talk about maximizing your potential, marami pong pwedeng isipin nito eh. Uh, let's, let's go further. Let's elaborate this maximizing your potential. Ang unang paninitin natin is getting more out of yourself in every situation. I mean, more, yung idea ng more, getting more out of yourself. Diba? Parang ang point is, when you evaluate your Christian life, you've been here for 10 years, or 5 years, or 20 years, when you evaluate your life, how, how, I mean, how would it be? What would be the result? It should, I mean, it should be in the highest level in such a way. Parang ganun yung idea. And also, when you, I mean, elaborate this thing, go deeper with what God desires Pag pinag-usapan yung maximizing your potential, lang ibig sabihin nito is doing more. Kanina, getting more. Ito, doing more in less time and achieve. Achieving better results. Ako po, napapump up. I'm so excited to share, not just to you, but I'm excited to see what God can do through these things in our church. I believe mara, mag, mara, maganda po ang gagawin ng Panginoon sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa atin in this season. And so that's why kanina po ko kanina ko pa, kanina ko pa binabanggit yung word na excited kasi we're so excited sa gagawin ng Panginoon. We're not just waiting for God to do something to us, but we are excited to do something through us. And that's different. 'Di ba? Merong different doon yung you are just waiting to that pastor will blow up. I mean, this pastor will preach a powerful message, but wait that God can do something through you. I mean, when you enlarge your, your, I mean, your potential, your, yourselves, maximize everything that God has given you, maraming pwedeng mangyari. Parang merong pong bigat because when we talk about maximizing your potential, we'll, we'll talk, we are talking about efforts here or growth. We're talking about growth. And uh, this week, I was browsing sa Facebook, uh, random browse. I saw the post of Billy Graham. At ang sabi ni Billy Graham, Wow, God's will for you is not to stay as you are. He wants you to grow. He wants you to grow. And kadi habang kagabi, nag-review po ako ng materials, na, na temp ako ng status sa Facebook, nakalagay yan sa Facebook. I was so excited. Kasi, I mean, dito po yung desire ng Panginoon. Hindi, na, hindi desire ng Lord sa atin, yung mediocre, yung mediocrity, stay as ordinary. Ang desire ng Lord for each one of us, ay mag-grow. Hindi lang yung isang mananampalataya ang mag-grow, all of us here, ang desire ng Lord ay for us to grow. Pwede na akong mag-stop, di ba? Kasi okay na yun. I mean, they encourage tayo to grow. But in this process, by the way, this is process, this is not an overtime experience. Hindi ito mangyari pagkatapos nag-grow ka na, hindi po, it's a process. It takes efforts here. It takes effort I mean, dapat nating embrace yung ganun at marami tayong pwedeng gawin. The question now is, after dealing with the what of enlarging your boundaries or enlarging yourselves or extending or maximizing your potential, those are what's. Ngayon, titignan po natin, ano po yung how? When we talk about how, paano natin gagawin when we enl- or when we talk about enlarging yourself or maximize your potential. Um, kung mag-google po kayo how to do this, ang dami pong ganun. Meron din po sa internet, meron sa YouTube. Pero, uh, when we talk about how to do these things, we do search the scripture. We do search the Bible. And the Bible describes so many hows, means, um, sabihin natin mga bagay-bagay para in order for us to grow, in order for us to really see what God can do through us in an excellent way. Marami pong gadon. Pero as far as the Bible is concerned, lalo yung binanggit kong Genesis 39, siguro ang gusto ko pong isuggest dito ay uh, maraming bagay, pero ang gusto pong highlighted na express is when you maximize, you rely on God's favor. Okay? Sabihin po natin sa ating katabi, God's favor. This is awesome. I mean, this is really awesome. Kasi when you do something for Him, it's tempting. When I say tempting, uh, talagang natitempt ka na to 
exert your efforts in such a way that na parang you're doing for God, pero you are not relying on Him, but you are relying on what you can do for Him. Pero iba po yung you rely on what you can do for Him, kesa sa you rely on Him doing for Him. Are you following? So ang point natin today is you rely on God's favor, rely on what God can do to you and through you. Because pag tinan po natin yung rely, yung ibig sabihin ng rely, it's, it means of depending on. You depend on God, you count on God. Meron ang efforts for sure, so that's why we, we're talking about efforts here. Pero at the end of the day, um, later on makikita natin yung mga desire ng mga authors. I'll be sharing uh, New Testament passages as well. Yung parang ang point is, ng relying is you depending on, you counting on, you, you lean on. Pag sinabing you leaning on, you're not trusting your own capabilities, your qualities, your potentials. Uh, walang contrast po dito because when you maximize your potentials, you are using God's ability within you. You will not use your own but God's ability within you. And you should start at the source. You should start at the source. And also, when you rely on, you trust in God's favor. Not trust in yourself. Yan po yung language ng Psalms, ng Proverbs. You trust in. Trust in. Rely not your own understanding. Trust in. Rely on. Depend on. And when you do that, marami pong pwedeng mangyari. Marami pong pwedeng mangyari. To some that, I mean, meant rely on God's favor. The point this morning is you rely on the source. Alam natin ang source ang Panginoon. Lahat ng potential natin nanggagaling sa Panginoon. So rely on that source. Rely on that source dahil marami pong pwedeng mangyari. I was reading an article published um, October 1991. My God. 1991 article of Karas Charisma Magazine. Familiar kay Evangelist or Pentecostal Charisma Magazine. Ito po yung author na paborito mo ni Pastor Jing, si Mars Monroe. Ang sabi niya, um, the God, God guarantees the maximum performance of our potential if we re- re- remain related to Him. Okay, so ang point is, I mean, we can really see yung ati pong potential if we remain related to Him and submit to the conditions, specifications, and standards set by Him. Um, well, patay na po si Miles Monroe, pero yung principle na iniwan niya ay super powerful pa rin. And he ended his article in that 1991 issue, October 1991, with this phrase, a personal relationship with God. Rely on God's favor. Rely on God's favor. Kasi marami pong pwedeng mangyari. Um, when we talk about God's favor, iba yung favor ng Panginoon sa favor po ng tao. Intindi, sabi po ng isang author, one day of God's favor is worth a thousand days of labor. Sabi ko, wow, Lord. Guys, sa'yo, I mean, compared to doing things on my own, when you rely on God's favor, marami pong pwedeng mangyari and God can use you in such a way that you, as you enlarge yourself, as you maximize your potential, you are giving glory to God. Hallelujah. One day of God's favor is worth, is worth a thousand days of labor. 
Ang point niyan, hindi tayo masyado nag exert ng effort, ng sobrang nagpapawis ng todo-todo para in order for us to attain these things, but we are relying on God to work not just in us, but through us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ito yung, ito yung verse na parang, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield. Last Sunday, we were singing about the goodness of God. Your, your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. It reminds me of goodness as God's favor sa buhay ng bawat isa sa atin as we continually rely on Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Our verse said, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Mayroong favor lagi kay Joseph. And when you read verse 21, the Lord was with him, he showed him kindness and granted him favor. So yung favor na to, ibang-iba sa buhay ng bawat isa sa atin. Yun po yung distinguishing fact na um, pwede kang madistinguish na different from non-believing uh, person, you are, you are living under God's favor. You are blessed, you are favored by God, you are highly favored by God. So rely on it. And when you do that, marami pong pwedeng mangyari. In this material, I'll be sharing three things na pwedeng mangyari when you rely on God as you maximize your uh, potential. As you rely on God um, in His favor, as you maximize your, your, your potential, three things that will happen to each and every one of us. And this will sure guarantee na maglalago po tayo within ourselves for the glory of God. First, is you will always find His purpose upon you. The negative side, when you rely on yourself, you'll, you'll, you don't have time, you will never have a time to see God's plan, God's purpose within your life. You will be accustomed and you will be entertaining things for you and because of you and just for you, me, myself, and I. But when you rely on Him, it's open and it's not just possible, but it's sure that when you maximize your potential in rely, rely him, you rely on him in maximizing your potential, God's purpose will always reveal. I mean, you will always find his purpose upon you. Ito mga verses na to, this is not just shortcut. We're familiar with the verse, chapter 39 says, Nalipat po si Joseph, he was uh, brought uh, to Egypt because he was um, bought by a trader. Binenta ng mga kapatid niya sa trader on the way to Egypt. We're familiar that, di ba? Um, alakala, sabi ng mga kapatid niya, ben, patayin. Sabi ng panganay, don't uh, lay the sword kasi mahal yun ng ating tatay. Ibenta na lang natin sila. So, asya. And then he was uh, bought by a trader and that trader went to Egypt. And he was, I mean, sold as well to Potiphar. At alam natin yun, talagang makakita natin na he was in the midst of situations na mahirap. Kasi when you read verse 1, Now Joseph had been taken down in Egypt, Potiphar, an Egyptian, who was one of Pharaoh's officials. The captain of guard bought him from the Ismaelites who had taken him there. So, ibig sabihin, that moment, he was foreign, foreigner, dun sa sitwasyong yun. Pero it didn't stop to that, I mean, Joseph to maximize everything na meron siya because at first, prior to 39, when you read Genesis, ang dami pong nangyari. And events na it should have not been happened because, I mean, I don't know, if, marami pong mga ganun na dapat hindi mangyari, pero it happened because God allowed to happen. And here comes 39, we see that parang, okay, here comes a, a guy, a young people, um, a youth in a foreign land, anong pwedeng mangyari? And we are waiting to see what will happen. And here comes this guy, I mean, Mapapansin po natin, when you read verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph and he prospered and he lived in this house, the house of this Egyptian master. Um, at makikita, ang daming nangyari. Pero still, uh, fast forward kasi I'm dealing with the purpose. Diba, okay na si Joseph. Um, binagkatiwalaan, blindness si Potiphar. Later on, titignan po natin yun. And then, merong sitwasyon. Ang sitwasyon, sabi ng verse, one, verse 11, one day he went into the house of to attend his duties. Meron siyang ginagawa. And none of the household servants was inside. Meron pong temptation. 
Shikot, sino yung shikot? Si Potipara. Potipara is the... Uh, uh, Mrs. Potipar, not Potipara. Mrs. Potipar. Kasi parang ganun. Kasi pag pastor, pastora. Ano? So, Mrs. Potipar. May crush si Mrs. Potipar kay Joseph. Because the description of the Bible, si Joseph ay tall, dark, and handsome. That's this is description. I mean, she caught him by his clock and said, come to bed with me. My goodness. Parang may naman. Parang, ah, parang, no. He left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. That's why, di ba, we're, we're familiar with the phrase, Joseph the dreamer, this time Jesus the runner. <laughs> uh, Joseph, the, Joseph the runner, not Joseph the dreamer. Uh, he ran dun po sa temptation na yun. And we're thinking of purpose here. Joseph knew that that moment, going to bed with this Mrs. Potiphar was not God's purpose upon him. It's so clear sa kanya. But I mean, sabi ng verse, diba? No one, none of the household servants was inside. Who cares? Wala pang CCTV noon. Wala pang makakakita. Pero he was clear with God's purpose. He was just relying on his God, the God who, who delivered, I mean, the God who gave him dreams, actually two dreams, and that through two dreams, it was so clear to him about God's purpose upon his life. And later on, makikita natin why God brought Joseph to, was brought to, was brought to Egypt. Alam natin yung purpose, to save Israel, to save Canaan, to save his father. Nakikita po natin yun. What we're saying here is that when we talk about God's purpose, it's so tempting na pag merong situation, you are, I mean, you, I mean, you are allowing to dictate yourselves to that situation. When we say dictate, uh, whatever it is, just go with the flow. Kung ano yung binigay sa'yo, just go it. But now, you are growing, you are relying on God. And when you rely on God and you enlarge yourself, you are growing. Nakarelay ka sa Kanya because when you do that, magiging clear, you will always find His purpose upon you. Ibig sabihin, you will not do such stupid things. You will not do such stupid Things na kung saan ay hindi pattern sa purpose mo. Meron kang purpose here on earth. That's why Rick Warren in his book, uh, Purpose Driven Life, ang nakalagay na taglay doon, what on earth I am here for? I mean, we talk about purpose. That's why I, I will ask this today. Why are you here? Why are you doing what you're doing? It leads to purpose. Kung hindi mo alam yung purpose, God's purpose for you is to, to grow Sa buhay yung pananampalataya. Hindi lang magstay sa ganyan. Hindi lang para, I mean, we don't have attendance here. I mean, hindi lang para magpacheck. Kundi ang purpose natin is for us to grow inwardly, uh, within ourselves, grow spiritually. That's clear. I was, tell, I mean, I was telling this, but maraming beses na sa mga kabataan, uh, in your high school, pag ikaw ay nasa high school, hindi part ng purpose mo ang mag-boyfriend, mag-girlfriend. Kung ikaw ay college, hindi rin purpose mo na mag-boyfriend and my girlfriend Because your, your purpose kung bakit ka na school ay mag-aral. Amen. <laughs> hindi naman kabataan ng mga kausap ko. Pero what I'm saying is, I keep telling in this purpose. Kasi parang kahit yung mama ko, sinasabihan din ako doon. Though may mga ginawa ako mga violation, pero na-check po ako. I was telling these things because this is important. Hindi lang po sa mga kabataan, but all of us. I mean, God put you in a very special position. And that position is for us to grow. And when you rely on Him every day of your lives upon growing, makikita mo na clear na clear yung purpose mo in your work, in your community, in your family, in your relationship. There's a purpose. There's clear. So ang suggestion is to live in that. I mean, rely on that, depend on that, count on that, trust on that. Don't go to the left, go to the right, go to the wreck, to the straight path, to the purpose that God has for you. At yung purpose name, the best para. Amen. Give Him glory. Hallelujah. Clear na clear. And it's, it's true enough, Joseph succeeded. Marami pong bagay tayong nakita. So clear na clear po sa kanya yung purpose. At yun po yung gusto nating tingnan. When you enlarge yourself, you see your purpose. 
you see God's purpose upon you. Not just your own purpose, but God's purpose. Maraming mga purpose sa ating mga buhay, pero when we talk about God's purpose, that's ultimately, that's awesome. Mas magandang embrace po yun. Meron tayong mga plans, meron tayong mga desire, pero let's just um, lay down this desire, align this desire to God's purpose sa ating pong mga buhay. Because it will lead us, leads us to our uh, personal growth. Amen. Not just only, not, not only that, you always find His purpose, but when you rely on God, makikita din po natin yung presence ng Panginoon lagi sa buhay natin. When you rely on God, when, uh, maximizing your potential, growing every time na meron kang opportunity, you grow for the Lord, mapapansin mo na hindi ka niya pababayaan, hindi ka niya iiwan, and when I said that, you will always find His presence. I mean, hindi mo, Lord, where are you? O parang yung past tense, Lord, where were you when it happened? Lord, nasaan ka? Parang ganun, parang sasabihin ng Lord, nandito lang na kaman ako anak, hindi mo ako pinapansin. But when you rely on Him, ibig sabihin ng relying kasi is depending on, trusting in, you are always in constant, constant communication. And when you are in constant communication, as if you are very close to Him. I'm not preparing dito po sa church. I'm preparing of our 24-7 life. Kahit nasa office ka, nasa school ka, nasa Kiapo, nasa Divisoria, kahit saan you rely on God, sensitive ka sa presence ng Panginoon. And it's always, there's always joy in the presence of God. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Sabi ng ating pastor, the safest place on earth is in the presence of God. And you will grow there. You will surely grow. Let's read verses 2 and 5. He was a foreigner, pero ang sabi ng Bible, the Lord was with Joseph. I just want to conclude this. When I say conclude, para wala nang usapan later on. Because why Joseph prospered, why Joseph succeeded, why Joseph did this, did that. Because the Lord was with him. Take that praise to the account of Joseph at nothing. Joseph will, will I mean, wala pong ma-accomplish. But that praise ay nandyan for us to see in our days that it is also... I mean, same principle that you rely on Him. You rely on His favor. You rely on Him. And when we talk about the Lord was with, parang kasama niya, it talks about His presence. Malayo po siya. He was a foreigner. He's alone. Diba? He's alone. Um, <laughs> when you talk about alone, yung, sorry, wala naman yung anak ko. Lagi kong binabangit yun sa preaching. Please bear with me. Yung bunso, yung, yung lalaki ko, uh, four years old, Eh, siyempre, nag-take care kami dun sa bunso. Pag matutulog na, struggle. Um, eh, siyempre, focus si siya sa, sa baby. Tapos ako din, minsan nag-aaral o anything, may ginagawa sa computer. Pag pinapatulog na, lagi niyang sinasabi, I'm alone here. Pero isang bed lang po yun. I'm alone here. Ang pagitan lang ay eto. Dito siya, dito siya siya. I'm alone here. No one will cuddle me. No one will sing me lullaby. I'm alone here. Parang ganun, tapos iniwan siya sa sala, iniwan siya sa, sa, sa kwarto, tapos kakain kami, almusal, kasi matagal siyang gumising. I'm alone inside the room, nobody take care of me. Mga ganun sinasabi, I'm alone. Pero, no, you're not alone, we're here. Parang ganun. I mean, just imagine, uh, bata po yun. Let's go back to this principle. Si Joseph, alone, literally alone. Alone. Mas okay pa nga si Daniel eh. Diba? Si Daniel when he was brought to, to Babylon, may kasama siyang tatlo. There were foreigners there, pero si Joseph, isa lang siya. Technically. Pero overall, this Joseph, I mean, who was taken, ay pumunta po sa Egypt, pero hindi po siya alone. The Lord was with Joseph and he prospered and he lived in the house of Egyptian master. Remember this, when you are experiencing the presence of God, pansin niyo lang. When, when God's presence is always there for you, when God's presence, when you see God's presence, pansinin niyo, when his master saw that the Lord was him, was with him, pause a bit. Christian ba si Putapar? Member ba siya ng capital city? Bakit nare-recognize niya na mayroong presence ng Lord kay Joseph? Hindi. Hindi naman siya umatin ng Bible study natin. <laughs> Hindi siya Christian. Foreigner ito. 
di ba? Outside of God's will, outside of God's promise, Egypt, kalawan ng Israel. Pero here comes this man relying on God and when the presence of God, when he, he, he found God's presence in his life, all days, all the days of his life, kahit yung mga tao na ambunan, there's something in this guy. I think, I mean, what's wrong with you? Why are you, I mean, uh, I think you're awesome. And then later on, sasabihin, no, it's not. It's God's presence inside me. Diba? Sabi po ng mga kabataan, pag yung mga, mga single, tayo ay mga pogi. Presence of God inside. Diba? Pogi. Presence of God inside. It's clear. It's also clear. When you see, when, when God's presence is always there, when you, when you rely on Him, kasi talaga magmamanifest yan. The presence of God will just manifest and even other people, not Christian, hindi sila mananampalataya. So, hindi sila sensitive dapat sa presence ng Lord. Kasi wala silang, Chris, wala silang spirit eh. Pero God allowed that to happen and in a position that Joseph was there doing the things of God, allowing God's purpose to be fulfilled sa buhay niya. And here comes this unbelieving person, his master, so that the Lord was with him. And the Lord gave him success in everything he did. Oh, that was awesome. In order for us to grow maturely, in order for us to maximize everything that we have, God's presence is crucial. Rely on Him. Amen. Sabi ng verse 4, Joseph found favor. I mean, when you read prior to this, I mean, telling this because th- that's the context. I mean, saan mo makikita? Wow, I was brought, I about, I mean, my brothers, my, my brothers was about to kill me in the desert. Diba? Hinulog siya sa, sa, kanya, sa isang deep well, sa, sa balon. And then nag-usap po sa mga kapatid. And these brothers decided, especially Robin, e benta na lang natin siya, let's sell him to these traders, to the Ismailites. So parang, I mean, God, Joseph's life was on a mess right now. I mean, those times. He was really a mess, parang no direction, no thing. And then, siyempre, foreigner, di ba? OFW, I mean, malayo, walang wala, alone, isolated. But even in that situation, that courage, that thing, relying on God is crucial because even in that situation, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. And this man who bought him from the Ismailites, put him in charge of his household and he entrusted his care, everything he owned. And when you read verse 5, highlighted, from the time he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned, the Lord bless the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. When you, are, when you rely on God, you will always find His presence on you at yung mga taong nasa palibot mo, maambunan ng biyaya ng Diyos. When you live under the influence of God's presence, but if you live according to your, your capability, not just, I mean your, and not on God, maaring pwedeng ma-challenge sila, ma-bless sila sa ginagawa, pero there's no impact. There's no lasting impact. There's no anointing in such a way. People are blessed when we do something for Him, when we rely on Him. So that's why when we are Christ-centered with our living, when we say Christ-centered, we are giving Him the glory, we are giving Him the honor, we are exalting Him, the Lord is blessed. And when the Lord is blessed, He will pour out His blessing kahit sa mga hindi mananampalataya. And later on, I mean, if we do that, if we live that, if we strive that, we rely on Him, alam natin kahit yung first service, jump pack, hindi natin kailangang hintayin yung message part para mapuno. I mean, the moment na we come here, 7 o'clock, puno na tayo. Because our lives will be transformed by God and other people, wow, hallelujah, will, will experience also the blessing of God. Magiging curious sila, saan ka nag-church? I mean, why are you, I mean, what are you doing? Why are you so blessed? Why are you, as, I mean, every day of your lives, you're skipping, smiling, you are blessed, diba? even though you have problems, you're still it's the presence of God inside. Hallelujah. Sabi po ni, uh, that's, that's verse 5, the blessing of the Lord was on everything. 
it's, it's always clear, it's an equ equation actually, that when you rely on Him in everything that you do for you to grow, yung presence ng Lord laging nandyan. And, I mean, it, let's, let's be clear on this, everything that you put your hands on it, on, on something, for sure, the result will be a blessing. The result will be amazing and we are so excited. Hallelujah! Sabi po ni, uh, sabi po ni Genesis 23, 20, 29, 23, because the Lord was with Joseph, it talks about presence. He gave him success. Ang nagbigay ng success sa kanya, ang Lord. So what we're trying to establish here, ang purpose is to rely on the source. Don't rely on the gifts that He gave. Rely on the giver itself. We're relying on the source. We're relying on for us to be, I mean, to enlarge ourselves. Maraming effort dito ang gagawin. Hindi po nag-stay doon. So that's why it's a series. Pero to start off, ang desire natin is everything that we do, everything that we do, ang gusto natin mayroong blessing ng Panginoon. Makikita natin pag wala yung presence ng Diyos sa ginagawa natin. We can do actually because we have gifts, we have talents, we have abilities na binigay ng Panginoon. Pero it's so distinguishing na makikita natin na different yung ginagawa natin with the presence of God with the anointing, with the supervision of God, and we are so excited. No matter what, I'm sabi po ni Chris Tomlin in his song, Our God, familiar kayo sa silang Our God, in the bridge part, and if our God is with us, you're familiar with that? And if our God is with us, what can stand against? That's from Romans chapter 8, verses following, death, sword, famine, Nakedness, no one can separate us from God because God is with us. His presence will be uh, there for us. This is awesome. Let's desire to grow sa harapan po ng ating Panginoon. Amen. Rely on Him. Rely on Him. First purpose, you will always find His purpose. Second, you will always find His presence. Lastly, this morning, before communion, you will always find His power upon you when you rely on Him. You will not experience His power, His power, rely on yourself. You'll just experience your capability. But when you rely on God's power, God's favor upon your lives, the result, the impact of what you're doing will be lasting, will be eternal. You will always find His power upon you. That verse 20, 20, and 20, 20 to 23 it speaks of, I mean, amazing journey that Joseph had. He had a dream, and that dream leads to, ano ka ba Joseph? I mean, di ba, first dream niya, ano first dream niya? Um, um, sorry. Yung nakakita, siya, nakakita siya ng mga, yung palay ba yun? Yung palay ba? Or yung palay na luluhod sa kanya, yung mga tala, luluhod sa kanya. Uh, yung, yung hay, yung hay, luluhod sa kanya. Pati yung... Uh, so parang, uh, yeah, moon and star. So parang, uh, he, I mean, his brothers knew na, hey, Joseph, you're, you're saying that we will bow to you, even our, 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 our parents? My goodness, Joseph. Parang ganun yung dating eh. And then the second dream, alam natin, sobrang, ano second dream nga? Second dream ay? Ano yung second dream of Joseph? Sorry, yung moon and star. Siyempre, yeah, sorry, yung moon and star. Kasama na po lahat ng entire uh, family ni Joseph. Ah, grabe. Uh, Siyempre, mahal din ni, ni sino yung tatay ni Joseph? <laughs> ni Jacob. Mahal ni Jacob si Joseph. So, bidigyan pa ng, ng magandang to a coat. At doon pa, nag, talaga, nagtampo yung mga kapatid, no? Sana hindi yung ginawa ni Jacob. <laughs> Pero ang point is, iba yung journey ni, ni, ni Jacob. Sobrang tindi ng journey niya. Tapos yun, um, they went somewhere, uh, nainggit yung mga kapatid, um, Patayin na lang natin to. I said that a while ago. Um, I mean, he tried to um, lower uh, Joseph to a deep well. Uh, yun, at least, so, tapos nagpatay sila ng isang hayop para tapos dilagay yung coat na ginawa ng tatay niya para sabihin na patay. Tapos ito lang na-recover namin. Pero nagbagong isip, one of his uh, brothers said, uh, let's just sell him somewhere. At least meron tayong pera in a sense. And then, yun yung journey. That journey is not, not good. It's not really good. At kung titignan mo yan, when you evaluate, it's not really something. Pagdating niya kay Potiphar, maganda. 
And then when you read verse 11, hindi maganda. Diba? This, this journey or this flow of thoughts suggests that um, when you do this, ultimately, okay agad. Hindi po. In the midst of what we're doing sa harapan ng Panginoon, there will be challenges. I'm not saying na kapag you rely on God, lahat ng buhay mo okay. No. There will be challenges. And there, those challenges were real kay Joseph. Di ba? Okay, nasa verse 1. Maganda. Pero pagdating ng verse 11, dumating si you, Mrs. Potipar. And then, ah! And then, without uh, investigating, uh, pagdating ni Potipar, ah! Bring Joseph to the, to the, to, to, to the cell. At alam natin, kinulong ni the prison. Pero just imagine, kahit nasa prison, there's something there. Sabi po ng verse 20, it's clear there na parang it's so amazing na makita natin itong bagay na to. Sabi ng verse 20, Joseph masters, Joseph master took him and put him in prison. That's the context. Kasi nga, alam natin, um, hindi na nag-investigate si Potipar. How come Potipar? Hindi na nag-investigate kasi okay, di ba? Parang Potipar, I mean, I've been doing good things and then all of a sudden, this your wife did something to trick you. Ay, siyempre, mahal ni Potipar yung si Mrs. Potipar. I mean, he just listened to her and then all of a sudden, gave the decision, put Joseph in prison. The place where the king's prisoners were confined, this is crucial. But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him and God showed him kindness and granted him favor. I mean, kahit saan ka dalhin, when you rely on that favor, when you rely on God, when you, I mean, as you grow yourself, you rely on Him, hahabulin ka talaga ng favor ng Panginoon. Diba? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of your life. We've been singing again, the goodness, your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. Diba? In the eyes, kanina, diba? In the eyes of the Egyptian master. Ngayon, um, 20 verses ago, passed in the eyes of the prison warden. And when you read verse 22, so the warden put Joseph in charge. So ibig sabihin, Joseph was given a power to do something. Yun nga lang, nasa prisohan. Kanina, when you read verse 2, uh, verse 3, uh, Joseph, sabi doon, Joseph uh, found favor in the eyes and became his attendant. Putipar, I'm reading verse 4, Putipar put him in charge of his household. It speaks of power, I mean authority. But here comes, the warden put him in charge. Pero low level, pero there's something there. Of all those held in the prison, pero at least meron pa rin siyang authority, meron pa rin siyang power na gawin yun. And he was made responsible of all that was done there. I mean, no matter what your situation is, it doesn't need to be a bigger one for you to exercise your gift, for you to be of good value, to put excellence on what you do. Kahit mababa, you can do your best, you can do with excellence. Wala naman nakakakita sa akin. This is just something. So, mediocrity is there. Uh, mediocre, it's ordinary kasi no one sees me. Walang CCTV to, no one will recognize me. I mean, I just, I don't know. Pero, hindi yun yung will ng Panginoon. Ang will ng Lord, whatever your situation is, I mean, wherever you are, even though you're in the lowest situation, when I say lowest, there's highest, uh, higher situation, wherever you are, I mean, just rely on God. And you will see His favor upon your lives. And when you see God's favor in your lives, I mean, this is clear. I mean, you, you will grow yourselves. I mean, mag enlarge yung sarili mo, makikita mo yung power niya sa buhay mo. And here comes this verse 23. The warden paid no attention to anyone and anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph. We've been repeating that statement kanina pa all over kasi when you read verse 1, the Lord was with him. And when you read verse 23, the, because the Lord was with Joseph, and when you talk about interpreting the Bible, when you talk about understanding the scripture, that phrase, na, patuloy na inuulit, that should be one of the general principles. Not just one, but that would be the general principle, the overlining principle of the passage. The Lord was with him. So keep on relying on the source 
the Lord was with him and gave him success in whatever he did. Hallelujah. We will be powerful. Powerful in such a way that people again will be blessed. Even though physically we're weak, even though we're limited, but when we rely on Him, His favor, parang ang dating sa iba ay parang, I mean, what drives you? I mean, it's really inside. Not just the presence of God, but it is Him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. That's Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. And yun po magiging clear sa atin. Wow, hallelujah. Sabi doon ni Chris Tomlin. Kanina, and if our God is with us, it speaks of presence, ngayon, and if our God is for us, sa atin, para sa atin, at nakikipaglaban sa atin, who can be against us? We're not talking about just here para makipaglaban sa mundo, but we are talking here about overall principle that when you do something for Him, when you rely on Him, when you maximize everything that you have, God has given you, yung power niya, you will always found, find His power on you, upon you. And when you do that, marami pong pwede, marami pong pwedeng magagawa. Hallelujah. When you maximize your potential, you rely on God's power, you depend on Him, you lean on Him, you you um, you lean on Him and you trust in. Marami mong pwede mangyari. You are uh, allowing yourselves to be close dun po sa source na bidigay po ng ating Panginoon. Hallelujah. So let's just be close sa ating Panginoon. Let's just be intimate. Let's just grow sa Panginoon. Lumago tayo sa ating Panginoon. And when you do that, when you, marami tayong pwede mangyari. And this is a sad thing. Uh, I used this last year in the topic of worship. Pero the same principle. Um, many Christians grow up in church, but never grow in Christ. Your stay here in church, the, the years that you stay here in church doesn't um, sabi natin, um, identify you that you are really growing. Ang principle jan is, you're growing in Christ. And okay yun. Influential po yung mga, I mean, that's, that's part of our growth. Matagal na tayo sa church. That's okay. Pero as long as you're growing, that matters to the Lord. As long as you're growing, that's enlarging yourselves. Hindi ka looban ng Lord, you mag grow. Remember, uh, uh, Billy Graham, God's will for you is not you to stay as you are. God's will for you is to grow. Hindi tumagal sa church, but to grow in Christ. They know Him, but they don't know Him. Kabisado yung hymns, kabisado yung ganun. Pero hindi kabisado si Lord. It's a sad thing. It's a sad thing. The Apostle Paul, in his language to the Philippian believers, Paul, I mentioned this, uh, matagal na dito sa Paul Pitong ito. Paul was born again in the book of Acts, chapter 9, you familiar? On the road to Damascus, he was about to persecute the Christians. And uh, with a letter on hand that commanded to persecute any, any Christian. And that moment, he encountered God and he heard the voice, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Lord, who are you? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. And that moment, that is a very powerful statement, powerful event kay Paul, he was born again. And from time, that time on, he was so radically changed. From a persecutor of church, he became a super apostle, it was mentioned there. He became a follower of Christ, defending of the gospel, wrote most half of the, first, uh, the New Testament, 13 letters of the New Testament from Romans to Philemon. He wrote those uh, letters, and those letters exemplified about his character about him. Nabanggit ko na rin na one author um, summarizes Paul's theology. Ang kanyang title ng libro ay In Him. In Him, Paul's theology. So more about Christ. Grow, yung grow about Christ. In his letter to, to Philippians. Meron siyang characteristic. Meron siyang Pharisee. Uh, when you read chapter 3 verses uh, 2 hanggang uh, verse 6, 
you will see there na meron siyang pwedeng i-boast about him, about his character. He's growing that time. He was growing that time. Pero sabi ng verse 7, everything, I don't compare those everything as gain. I compare this loss for the sake of knowing Christ our Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. And when you read verse 10, ito po yung verse 10, I want to know Christ. His desire is to grow in Christ. His desire is for Him, for Christ to be known upon His life. In the reading of Philippians, in the writing of Philippians, and backtrack to Acts chapter 9, that was 30 years ago. 30 years ago from chapter 9 of Acts to the writing of Philippians, 30 years. Pero His desire to know Christ. His desire to be close to Christ. To know the power of His resurrection and participation in suffering, becoming like Him in His death. And when you read verse 11, wala dyan, to so somehow attain the resurrection of the dead. He was talking about His reliance upon the Lord. So no doubt, mababasa natin doon, I know my God will provide all my needs according to His riches in Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He was so close and accustomed sa ati pong Panginoon. So that's why I'm challenged this, this morning. Let's rely on God kasi marami pong pwedeng mangyari. Everything that we do, everything that we do, let's just, I mean, desire na mas lalo natin siyang makilala. Everything that we experience, kahit mahirap, just make it a point that God will just show His purpose in that mess situation, that God will show His presence in that untoward circumstances, and God will show His power in the midst of foreign circumstances, in the midst of problem. I mean, you do that for sure, God will be glorified and God will see Himself. I mean, God will allow you to see Himself in all those situations. And we will grow to Him habang tayo po ay nabubuhay. Amen. Let's grow together in Christ. Let's go together in Christ. Let's bow our heads. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, it is not your will for us to stay as we are. It is your will for us to grow. Hallelujah. So that's why, Father, in the name of Jesus right now, we're praying, Father, that all the days of our lives, every minute of our life, every second of our life, 24-7, 365 days, Lord, we're desiring to rely on you, rely on your favor, rely on your goodness, rely on who you are. In the process of this, Father, as we maximize everything that we have in enlarging our, our, ourselves, Lord, this means growing, growing, spiritually growing. And in this process, Lord, as we grow, you, we believe that you will just show yourself. We believe that you will always Lord, show yourself and God's purpose will be clear. God's presence will be felt and God's power will be manifested. Lord, forgive us kung may mga times na naniniglek po namin. We're so accustomed of ourselves. We're so accustomed of our, our welfare. But in fact, our desire should be you. Our desire should be you, Lord. You, you, Panginoon. More of you. You're all that I want. You're all that I need. Tulungan nyo kami mag-grow dun sa aspetong yan, Panginoon. Hallelujah. And for sure, everything will follow. Hindi po ito overnight process, kundi ito yung everyday, day-by-day process. But we believe you will just allow us to grow. And we're excited to see what you can do to us and through us in the process of growing. Help us, Lord, to be excited na makita nyo ang paglago sa buhay ng bawat isa sa amin. Because this will an instrumental for other people to see Christ within us, to see us growing in you. Hallelujah. Bless every desire right now, desire that leads to grow. Right now, Panginoon, meron kaming iniisip. I don't know, maybe, Lord, help us to grow sa aspeto, Panginoon, ng prayer. Help us to grow in this aspect of Bible reading. Help us to grow when it comes to our fellowship with our brothers. Help us to grow in all aspects of our lives. Whatever it is that we can apply this message, help us, Lord. We rely on your favor in our lives. Hallelujah. Marami pong salamat, Panginoon. 
bless every desire right now that we will be doing in response to this message. And we sealed it in the name of Jesus. And the enemy will not snatch us, this one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.